Hey everyone, it's Ellis, and this is the patch 9.13 notes rundown. We're just gonna get right into it. Biggest news about the patch is team fight tactics, aka the future, aka League of Legends dead get no, I'm kidding. Uh is finally gonna be coming to the game here. So this is gonna be obviously really good. Kiana is in the game. I know that I did not do a champion reveal. I actually found the champion very uninteresting, and I was not really too excited about I'm I'm really sorry it's just, <laughs> I was I didn't this is the first champion I have not had an interest in because I felt like all of the abilities were extremely bland and then on top of that it just feels like it's coming into a really weird meta right now and we just had the Mordekaiser rework happen on 9.12 and every, everything just feels really weird about it so Maybe she'll end up being a really good champion. Hopefully she's overtuned so that things get really exciting and then she gradually gets nerfed into oblivion and then never played again and whatnot, but that's all. Anyways, Corky. Our ammo bar now reads left to right. The package ARAM timer's adjusted. Okay, so we're not going to look at that. Guyana. <clears throat> QL changes. Crescent strike. Tip of Diana's Crescent... Oh, just the tip, huh? Tip of Diana's Crescent Strike now uh, arc now reveals Fog of War for a short duration. Moonlight Sonata. Ooh, that was... That's a really... If you don't like the Moonlight Sonata, something's wrong with you. Crescent Strike casts more consistently. Aim towards the cursor. Crescent Strike travels slightly faster. Um, so these are very subtle changes, and they're not going to magically make Diana viable, but it probably will make some high-low players think, Oh, well, I haven't played Diana in a long time. Let me pick her up. And then they'll play her for a few games. Maybe someone has a lucky win streak inside of solo queue, ends up making a debut in pro play. Everyone else follows along like sheep. So, Alawi, W, minimum damage added, also applies to turrets. Tentacles disappear faster when Alawi leaves. E Spirit and Vessel duration decreased. Time between tentacle attacks decreased. Our tentacle cap increased, okay? Passive, Prophet of an Elder God. Tentacle AP ratio. Yeah, but that, that, that's important. Well, I suppose that I guess it can be if you get Baron, right? That's, that's pretty much it, because otherwise you're you're never getting ability power, so what is the purpose of this? Tentacles no longer go into an idle state when Alawi is not around to command them. Alawi can now bring Prophet of an Elder God's cooldown to her... T Alawi can now ping Prophet of an Elder cooldowns to... Okay. Tentacle despawn after Alawi has left the area for 60 seconds to 30 seconds, okay? Enemies gain vision of tentacles through Fog of War within 1,400 range to 1,000 range. That's obviously a nice little subtle buff. Uh, enemy champions no longer globally get vision of attacking tentacles. Fixed a bug where tentacle slams that were mid-fight when Alawi died dealt no damage. That's obviously really big. Uh, harsh lesson. Minimum damage 20 to 60. Minimum damage is dealt as bonus damage to turrets. That's obviously really nice. E-test of spirit. Base spirit duration 10 seconds to 7 seconds. Base vessel duration 12 seconds to 10 seconds. Spirit duration is no longer reduced each time Alawi is damaged by the turret. Time between tentacle attacks once every 10 seconds at all levels. Once every 5, 4, 3 seconds at Wow. Okay. Um, our Leap of Faith maximum summons five tentacles to six tentacles. Leap of Faith. So, you know, it, I don't think it's any coincidence that Quas has returned to League of Legends and now Alawi ends up getting buffed. But in all, in, in, in all actuality, these are really interesting changes because Alawi has always just been on the cusp of competitive but never really quite able to break into competitive and so these changes are all interesting um for people that don't know about e-test of spirit because it doesn't look like uh the bug change was fixed um move away if you end up becoming the vessel move away from the first one dodge it and then stand right next to it and another vessel will not end up spawning obviously you can't do this if allow is trying to fight you and she's on top of you but do not just keep running inside of a straight line and having endless amounts of tentacles just spawn and follow you i've seen enough hentai to know where that was going Anyways, Karma, base E movement speed duration decreased. Uh, some people are saying that it doesn't work anymore, but I'm pretty sure I... Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Anyways, base E movement speed duration decreased. Karma was a really good example of a placebo buff that had a lot of influence, and it started causing a lot of people to play her randomly, but nonetheless, movement speed duration 2.5 seconds, 1.5 seconds, and powered E duration still 2.5 seconds. Okay, it doesn't really matter to me all that much. I know that she is getting some love and attention inside of the LCK in specific, but it really, realistically, it does not make sense. I just think the meta is very bland right now, and if we're already on the O letter, I'm not expecting for too many big changes. Anyways, ratio. 1.1... 1. 1, uh, wow. Why is Orn getting buffed? That's actually really nice that his Volcanic Rupture 
got buff. Jungle, uh, Jungle Orn, I, I do believe, is the best tank jungler in the game right now. I've been very vocal about this for a couple of patches, unfortunately. No, players will probably end up trying to test him or go against any of the meta because, you know, people don't want to think outside the box. Anyways, Pike, Q cooldown decreased early, stab damage bonus removed, W movement speed now scales, E no longer damages non-champions. Okay, so top lane Pike is completely gutted, as is bottom lane Pike. Movement speed, 40 to decaying over 5 seconds, 40 to 60%, okay. Uh, Q bone skewer, 14, oh god. All right. Base stats, health growth, 105 to 95. She ends up losing a ruby crystal. Second damage ratio, 6% of Sejuani's max health to 5.25. It's very big. I think that Sejuani's in a very interesting spot. She's obviously extremely heavy priority right now inside of competitive. Um, even though she does have answers, I guess they're electing to nerf her rather than buff her answers. So anyways, Sivir, attack damage growth, mono region decrease, W cost uh, increase. So W ricochet 60 mana to uh, 75 mana, mono region 8.012 to 8, attack damage growth 3.11 to 3. So Sivir getting nerfed a little bit across the board. Um, I like how this isn't being noted as something that might pertain actually to Yumi in specific, which is a little bit unfortunate because we'll have to see if Yumi ends up getting hit as we are only at the S letters. Sona, QR damage ratio decreased, E bonus movement speed ratio decreased. Him of Valor, 0 0.3 ability power to 0 0.2 ability power. Song of Celerity, 6% movement speed per 100 ability power to 3% movement speed per 100 ability power. I don't necessarily think that this is going to cripple Sona. I do think that the teams that want to pick Sona will still pick her in the instances where they want to pick her. In fact, there's actually a lot of players that are very, very poor at playing her in the early into mid-game transition, but then obviously the mid to late transition, she's pretty straightforward and strong, so... In the Sona team compositions that want to pick her, she'll still end up being viable. I do think that a lot of people haven't done enough research on how to properly answer her, probably because it's a little bit difficult in order to endlessly scrim against the Sona. Silas, base damage attack, health growth, uh, base attack damage, health growth increased, W base damage increased. So Silas buffs once again, attack damage 58 to 61, health growth 85 to 95. He also ends up getting a ruby crystal. W Kingslayer, base damage 60 to 180 to 65 to 205. Eeb's Gung Duct. Uh, tooltip now properly mentions all mana scaling per rank information. Okay. Syndra, mana growth increased. Mana growth uh, 30 to 40 is quite sizable. She ends up getting a free spell cast basically in the early laning phase. It's not monumental, but obviously it can help her in the current state that she's in, but don't expect it to magically change anything. There is a lot of placebo buffs and changes all over this patch. It's another filler patch, which makes me very, very aggravated. Tristana, attack damage growth, mana increase, mana region decrease. Now, now watch this be something simple, like five damage. Base stats, attack damage growth, uh, 3.11 to 3.3, so she ends up getting 3 AD at level 18. Mana, 2.246.76 uh, to 250, mana region 7.2 to 7, okay. W rocket, all right, I was joking. 85 to 285 to 95 to 295. Maybe she ends up getting an extra 40, 50 damage uh, late game, which... God. All right, whatever. Ooh, dear. All abilities can now be leveled to rank 6. Passive monkey's agility. Uh, all abilities can now be leveled up 6 times, starting at level 16. Tiger stance. 30 to 150 to 30 to 180. Uh, and 1.85 attack damage. That's actually quite big. 60 to 235 instead of 60 to 200. Uh, e bear stance, 40% uh, bonus movement speed, 15 to, okay. Phoenix stance, 40 to 200 to 50 to 275. Is this the, is this the big one? Now, I, I'll be completely honest here that I do not really know all that much about Udir. I think that he is a, a pretty bad champion. In most cases, due to his lack of terrain scaling and his, his lack of synergy within the meta. However, is Phoenix Udir the best kind of Udir? I'm not actually totally sure. Um, I don't know what the competitive stance is compared to maybe a solo queue stance or something. So this is definitely going to be very interesting. We're going to move down anyway. Responsiveness uh, pass. Jarvin's, okay, similar to some of the work, Diana's Q, abilities more quickly and reliably apply their effects to their enemy's hit. That's actually really, really good. Items, Essence Reaver, cost 3,200 gold to 3,300. That feels really bad. Uh, Ronduin's Omen, upgraded and total cost decreased. 2,900 to 2,700 is really, really big for tanks. This is essentially uh, two minion waves, uh, almost, or you can look at it as almost, or I mean, it's basically like you just got an assist. 
So, okay. Rod of Ages upgrade and total cost decrease. So, 2700 to 2600 is also really big. This is an indirect Cossadin buff, um, which is really nice. So, Rod of Ages, nice, nice. Your shop returns. Okay, your shop returns, damage text updates, upcoming skins and chromas. All right, so the real, the real point of the patch. Arcade Caitlyn. Uh, okay. Wait, oh, wait, these are chromas? Oh, wait. Ar oh, Presti Arcade Prestige. <laughs> They're really going for the money, aren't they? What is that What is that Victoria's Secret spray tan that she has on right here? Come on. What is this? She's looking like the, uh, the, the is it the Sovereign People from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy or something? I have no idea what I'm looking at right there. Arcade Caitlyn. She looks much better here. Okay, much more natural. Look at this. This thing's looking like it's eye gazing at her right now. I don't even know what that is. Wait, is there any, uh, who is that? Is that Kaisa? We got a Kaisa skin? Oh, sh You always got to look for the Easter eggs. Okay, so right now, uh, Kaisa and Caitlyn are visiting Mario. And I think that's the, the, the green bean thing that you go up, right? In Mario? Maybe this is Mario Land. I don't, I don't actually know where we are right now, but... Um, that's a pretty interesting key card. This reminds me of, like, Final Fantasy 1 or something. Um, okay. Battle Boss Quiana. So, she's getting a skin, uh, as soon as she comes out. These are obviously all really cool over here. Hopefully, these end up being Little Legends. I'm not totally sure, but if these things are Little Legends, that would obviously be really great. Uh, please do not import her to, uh, Teamfight Tactics. Battle Boss Yasuo. Oh, this actually looks really cool. This looks really cool. And these look, these remind me of, uh, Boo. They, they sort of have the same face from Mario. This reminds me of Boo from Mario. Hopefully he's not like Bowser, although that does look like a castle behind him. I really hope that Yasuo is not Bowser. We can definitely have Battle Boss uh, Ramus take on that skin. So, okay. Um, so these are the skins. Uh, I don't really like any of them. Her shoulders are really broad. Her face is actually so chiseled that she looks like a guy. Uh, which I don't think would be what you're going for when you're trying to purchase Arcade Kaisa, so I don't really know. Um, Arcade Misfortune, all of their faces look really chiseled, although MF still does look like, uh, feminine. She, she does still look feminine. She, she has a Paris Hilton kind of look going on. Like, that nose definitely has had some work done to it, um, and she definitely has a, a V-shaped jaw, so, I mean, that's pretty, pretty impressive. Um, Arcade Riven, what is with the androgynous looks going on with these skins? You can easily say that this is a boy, and I would believe it. Like, it's a teenage boy. Like, it's a, you know, a 14-year-old boy. I mean, it's Titus from Final Fantasy X, and he's just wearing a chroma right now. I mean, that, that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting right here. It's actually looking like it's Box Box. Box Box was actually made into a skin or something. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Arcade Sona. Okay, well, Sona is... Interestingly enough, uh, I, I forget what the name of the book is when I was a child, but uh, it's like pasta or something for hair or whatnot, but I'm, I'm getting that vibe from Sona. Um, we move on here to Battle Boss Quiana. Um, it's like a drag queen. Is this intentionally being done this way because it's Gay Pride Month? Is that, is that why it's intentionally being done this way? These all look like gay pride skins. And if that's actually unintentionally what's happening, that's really, really, really cool. They, they actually look like gay pride skins. Their facial features and the color schemes and everything just look like gay pride skins. Maybe that's actually what this is. This would actually be so 20-head of Riot game. 25-head, because it's a 5v5. All right, so let's recap. So we have, we have gay pride skins. Um, <laughs> Riot is so 25-head. We need a, a Kappa Pride 5-head emote for Riot games. This is, this is fantastic. All right. 
Uh, so Kriana will end up seeing how she ends up fitting in. I actually don't even know her numbers right now, but I just thought that her kit was very uninteresting. Corky doesn't really matter. Uh, Diana doesn't matter. Might end up placeboing some people into trying her at high MMR. Maybe someone likes her enough in certain matchups because she does have some good matchups, but... Overall, not that great of a champion. I'm actually not sure if Diana even builds Rod of Ages, but if she does, then I guess she got an indirect buff. Alawi is very interesting. She also comes in at a very interesting time up in top lane, which she just may be able to be picked on red side as a counter pick. Um, Karma change doesn't really matter. Orn is actually, he just keeps getting buffed. Please, for the love of God, if you are a pro jungler and you're listening to this, go into the jungle with Orn in Spellbook. You can make it happen. I've been saying it for, I don't know, five months or something. Anyways, Pike, uh, it's really sad that the champion gets removed from the laning phase. Sejuani don't really care about it all that much. I think that it would have been much better to buff her counters than just nerf her directly, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Sivir, I'm surprised to see that Yumi isn't considered in this. I think there were maybe other ways of hitting her, but maybe they can come back to her later down the road when the Yumi mid ends up fading. Sona is still going to be picked in Sona team compositions. People still have yet to properly identify how to answer Sona. Uh, Silas, uh, doesn't seem like they actually want to let him go. One of the, uh, the, the good things about this match is that Akali did not get gutted and completely changed like we saw on Twitter. Uh, Syndra is, Syndra, Tristana are placebo buffs, uh, overall. Udir is really interesting, but I don't know enough about him to actually feel comfortable commenting on him, um, because I just don't even know what his competitive, uh, paths are and how he actually interacts right now so items essence reaver i feel really bad about rondo and zoman and rod of ages i think is really really cool so that is pretty much it for the patch overall feels like a filler patch maybe a Lowey. maybe because it's a filler patch some people will get more bored of the meta and will end up getting that is so five head by riot games the patch is just so bad or not bad, but the patch is so uninteresting that people get so bored and they just mix up the meta anyway because they just have to. Oh my, amazing. All right, that's it.